Here's another example we can solve using Lagrange multipliers. We want to find the shortest distance between the point 2, 1, negative 1 and the plane x plus y minus z equal 1. So if this is our plane here, this is the point 2, 1, negative 1 and uh, we have a random point on the plane that's called x, y, z. We want to find the shortest distance between uh, this point and the plane. So the first step in these types of problems is to find the fu function you're trying to maximize or minimize and to find the constraint. Once you find the function, we can say that the gradient of the function is equal to lambda times the gradient of the constraint. So we need to find the function f and the constraint g. In this case, the function I'm trying to minimize is the distance between the point and the plane. So let's write down the formula for the distance. Let's call it d is equal to the square root of x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared plus z minus negative 1, which is z plus 1 squared. And we can treat this equation over here, or this formula, as our function. But as you can see, we have the square root, which is going to be, um, it's going to make it hard for us to compute the partial derivatives. So instead of dealing with this formula, we can square both sides, and we can say that d squared is equal to x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared plus z plus 1 squared. And it's going to give us the same point because the coordinates of the point x, y, z that's going to give us the shortest distance or the smallest value for d is going to be the same coordinates of the point that's going to give us the smallest value of d squared. So instead of having to deal with the square root, we just square both sides knowing that we're going to get the same point at the end. And we can call this over here as our function f. Now we have f, we need to find g. And g is just the equation of the plane because whatever point we find, it has to lie in the plane. And the coordinates of the point x, y, z um, have to fit this equation. So the equation x plus y minus z equal 1 that's our constraint and let's call it g. So now we have f and g. Let's uh, start computing the gradient of both functions. The gradient of f, which is fx, fy, fz. Gradient of g, which is gx, gy, and gz. Okay, so fx, we differentiate this over here with respect to x. And we get 2 times x minus 2 if y you differentiate this with respect to y and you get 2 times y minus 1 fz we differentiate this with respect to z to get the partial derivatives so we get 2 times z plus 1 and uh, gx we differentiate this with respect to x we get 1 gy we get 1 gz we get negative 1 Okay, so the next step is to form the equations. We know that 2 times x minus 2 is equal to lambda times 1, which is lambda. 2 times y minus 1 is equal to lambda times 1, which is lambda. 2 times z plus 1 is equal to uh, negative 1 times lambda, which is equal to negative lambda. So now we have three equations and four unknowns. We need to introduce a fourth equation, and that equation is going to be the constraint, which is x plus y minus z is equal to 1. It's equation 1, it's 2, 3, and 4. So now by looking at equation 1 and 2, we see that lambda is equal to this over here, lambda is equal to this over here, so therefore 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 2 times y minus 1. We divide by 2 on both sides and we get that x is equal to y plus 1. And we can call this equation number 5. And then by looking at equations 2 and 3, we can see that 2 times y minus 1 is equal to negative 2 times z plus 1. We can divide by 2 on both sides. And we have that y minus 1 is equal to negative z minus 1. The minus 1's cancel. And we get that z is equal to negative y. And this here is equation number 6. So we can introduce or 
an equation number five and equation number six into equation number four. So let's do this five and six into four. We get that x, which is y plus one plus y plus z, which is going to be negative y. Um, sorry, minus z, which is going to be uh, minus negative y, so it's going to be plus y is equal to one. So this one cancels with this one, and we get that three y is equal to zero. Therefore, y is equal to zero. And we know from equation number five that if y is equal to zero, x has to be y plus one, which is one. And from equation number six, we know that z is equal to negative y. Therefore, z is equal to zero. So the coordinates of the point that gives extreme values is going to be 1, 0, and 0. So now that we found the point, we can substitute this point into the equation of the distance and we can find the shortest distance between the point and the plane. So the distance is equal to the square root of 1 minus 2 squared. Remember the point was um, 2, 1, and negative 1. And the point we found is 1, 0, and 0. So we're trying to find the distance between this, these two points. So we get 1 minus 2 squared plus um, 0 minus 1 squared plus 0 minus negative 1, which is 1 squared. With the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, square root of 3, and that is the final answer. And that's it.